Most software engineers will never earn more than $3 million over the course of their entire career. Not because they are not smart enough, but because they never learn how the tech game works. So in this video, I will show you the strategy to build $4 million career in tech, no matter if you are a junior, mid-level, or a senior software engineer. So let me show you the pyramid of software engineering. The software engineer career has three distinct stages. Each stage builds on the previous one, and all three are essential if you want to make Silicon Valley kind of money without breaking to Google or Meta. So without any further ado, let's start with level one. At level one, your goal isn't to land your dream job. It's all about building credibility and gaining experience. It's perfectly fine if your role requires jumping within various fields like backend, frontend, DevOps, testing, and even data engineering. At this stage, you don't need to specialize yet. You just need to get your foot into the door. In fact, it's a great advantage if you have to learn things outside of your job description. Trust me, this experience will be incredibly valuable later down your career. So let me tell you my own story. I was born in a tier B town in Poland, and in 2012, I graduated in computer science from the University of Economics in Katowice. You probably never heard of it because it isn't a prestigious university at all. After graduation, I started out making websites with jQuery, earning about $1,200 per month. My hometown didn't offer better opportunities, so it was clear to me that I had to relocate if I wanted to build a serious career as a software engineer. Silicon Valley or big tech jobs in the United States felt like another planet, so I started looking for jobs across Europe instead. A few months later, I landed a role in Vienna, Austria, doubling my salary and joining the first real product company. The company was building a popular adult website, and if you're in your 30s or 40s, there is a chance that you have been using it. Back then, the adult industry wasn't trendy at all, almost nobody wanted to work for us, and that was a great opportunity. Even as a junior developer, I got the chance to tackle serious technical challenges. For example, I built our first video player in JavaScript, and my code was used by over 1 million users every single day. You might not remember, but before 2013, everybody needed to install Adobe Flash to play videos in their browser. To be fair, my job wasn't always as glamorous as it might sound. I spent months testing our website on legacy Android phones and iPhone 3S. This experience taught me something crucial. The best opportunities come from industries most software engineers overlook. But what does it mean for you? If you're currently stuck in a mediocre job or living in the city with a promising opportunities, you must move closer to the action. I don't mean you should move to Silicon Valley and apply to OpenAI. In fact, I strongly recommend you don't do this. Instead, consider less obvious tech hubs like Frankfurt in Germany, London in the UK, or Austin, Texas if you live in the United States. And don't obsess about joining the big tech. Focus on industries other software engineers ignore like oil and gas, mining, big pharma, investment firms, logistics, or maybe even defense. These sectors might seem boring or outdated, and that's exactly why they are full of opportunities. At level one, your goal is clear. Secure a software engineering job that teaches you how software is really built and maintained. It might sound unattractive at first, but it's actually a huge advantage. You will learn how to build software designed for long-term maintenance, and this is an extremely valuable skill even in the today's job market. Your main objective at this stage is to build credibility on your resume. So when you land a job, you should stay there for at least two years, but under one condition. You must learn new things every day. If you stop learning, don't hesitate to move to another company. Remember, at level one, prioritize learning over salary increases. Don't get trapped by salary raises and be ready and willing to change the jobs to maximize your growth. One more thing, your job title at this stage doesn't matter at all. Your employer might call you a junior, mid-level, or a software engineer, but after two or three years of experience, you are still in your learning phase, so focus on learning. It will take you between three to four years to build a solid foundation, and then you're ready to level up to level two. At level two, your goal is clear. Increase your compensation and use your technical skills to directly impact the company's business. Let me show you my own story. At my first level two job, I was at global e-commerce provider called Digital River. I joined a team responsible for microtransactions and ended up working on a 10-year-old code base written in Java. Our platform was maintained by teams spread across three different time zones. 
Management and QA in Minnesota, Developers in Austria, and Client Delivery Team in Taiwan. Because of this setup, our development process was painfully slow. We could only release updates every six weeks, and even worse, our platform was a monolith, and our clients' online shops were nested directly in our code base. This meant our client delivery team had to build and test everything at least one month in advance to coordinate releases with us. Ad hoc releases were extremely painful. Literally, they involved 12 people in three different time zones. You might say one month doesn't sound that bad, right? Sometimes it shrunk to two weeks. For example, in autumn, there are two weeks between two major holidays, Thanksgiving in the United States and Christmas in Europe. It means our team needed to prepare releases of two high traffic campaign in a very short period. This time was always extremely stressful because e-commerce businesses make about 30% of their annual revenue during those holidays. My coworker from the DevOps team, Victor, and I saw this problem and we decided to fix it. It was 2015 and there was a hot new technology called Docker. I'm not sarcastic here. Docker was a cutting edge technology back then. We used it to extract clients' online shops from our monolith into standalone containers and set up continuous delivery pipelines for each of those stores. The result, we reduced the client's delivery team release timeline from six weeks just to a few minutes. This simple technical improvement had enormous impact on our business. And thanks to this, we were recognized as employees of the quarter after just five months on the job. And we even received bonuses for that. But what does it mean for you? At level two, your job isn't about writing code anymore. It's about understanding your company's business and identify where the biggest bottlenecks are. Start by asking yourself important questions. What is my role here? Am I a profit center? In other words, does my work directly generate revenue for the organization? Or am I a cost center, so my work is related to supporting other teams who generate revenue? In my case, I was a part of a cost center. My team built the platform used by our client delivery team who directly built clients and generated revenue. I couldn't directly drive profits, but I could help the client delivery team to make money faster. And that's exactly how you should view your role within your company. You should constantly ask yourself, how can I use my technical skills to help the company generate more revenue or significantly reduce costs? Speak with project managers, DevOps engineers, and colleagues from other teams. Understand their pain points. Look for projects that directly impact revenue or cut expenses. These are your biggest opportunities. But remember, companies operate at different magnitudes. Saving $10,000 per year by moving an app from AWS to bare metal server won't move the needle. For your organization, that's pocket money. To be noticed, your business impact should ideally be at least $500,000. As a software engineer, you must strive to work for companies that generate at least 10 times more value from your work than they pay you. In other words, if your salary is $50,000 per year, your employer should make or save at least $500,000 from your work. And this is how you become a 10x engineer. You generate 10 times more value than you are paid for. And sorry for bringing it up to you, but software engineering was never about writing clean code quickly. At level two, you should avoid agencies or consulting companies that bill other companies for your work. Because at those companies, it's about build hours rather than efficiency. Again, the two year rule still applies here. Sit the company for about two years to build credibility. And then you're ready to move on to the next one to maximize your growth and impact. And remember, make sure that you are learning how the company operates and increase your technical skills at the very same time. After around two to four years at level two, you're ready for the final stage, level three. At level three, your goal is simple but ambitious. You need to create such a significant impact across the entire organization that paying you a six-figure salary feels like a bargain for your employer. Let me show you how I did it. In 2019, I was still at a level two job working for a cybersecurity company. We were building products for small businesses that couldn't afford dedicated IT teams to protect their data. One day, a recruiter reached out to me on LinkedIn and asked if I would like to join a brand new AI startup. They wanted to hire elite engineers and data scientists from Europe to build the next unicorn. I was flattered and I agreed. Long story short, 
Three months later, I was on a plane to Abu Dhabi, joining that startup as employee number six. The mission of this startup was to bring AI to the oil and gas industry. But there was a catch. Almost nobody on our team had experience in geology or oil and gas. Fortunately, our company collaborated with the largest oil and gas company in the country called Adnoc. Thanks to that, we had access to most talented experts in the field, so we could use their help to build our products. Unfortunately, they never worked with software engineers, so they didn't know how to explain their problems in technical terms. My job quickly became less about coding and more about translating problems from non-technical experts into software. And believe me, the opportunity was massive. I would be politically correct if I say that the software in the oil and gas industry was slightly outdated in terms of usability. To be honest, it looked like it was built in 1990s. Seriously, most of these programs reminded me of my childhood. It was clear for me that we can disrupt this industry. It was challenging, but after two years of intense work, Adnoc decided to acquire us, and that's how AIQ was born. Our valuation hit $1.4 billion. But what does it even mean for you? I didn't land this job because of my extraordinary programming skills. I got it because I knew how to explain technical ideas to non-technical decision makers and solve their problems. I still remember my interview with Ali, our CEO, and believe me, he didn't ask me about programming languages, databases, or frameworks. Instead, he wanted to hear about the business problems I solved at my previous companies. He wanted to know how I contributed to the company's success rather than what tools I used. And that's exactly what Level 3 is all about. At this stage, your job isn't about writing code. It's about wearing multiple hats, understanding the business, and explaining technical solutions to non-technical experts. And believe me, most software engineers can't express their ideas without using technical jargon, making it impossible for non-technical leaders to make decisions and understand problems. But if you are serious about making six figure salary, you must bridge the technology and the business. Eventually, you will become so valuable that the company might offer you a stake at their own business to make sure you won't leave them. And that's why reaching level three takes so much time. You need to develop excellent technical skills, ideally across multiple domains, combined with communication skills. You must become confident enough to advise CEOs on the best technical paths and clearly explain the risks and costs of making wrong decisions. The truth is, most software engineers never reach the stage. They get stuck somewhere in the middle of the salary distribution because they avoid stepping out of their comfort zone. Sorry to bring it to you, but if you want a six-figure salary, you need to convince decision makers you are worth it. And trust me, they will gladly pay you a Silicon Valley salary once they see your work can save the company millions or create multi-million dollar products. Remember, to justify paying you $100,000 per year, the company must generate at least $1 million from your work. And that's what makes you a true 10x engineer. Now you know how to design your career as a software engineer, but none of that matters if you can't land the right job. That's why you should watch this video next, and I will show you one mistake that stops 99% of software engineers from landing job interviews. Click on the video now and I will see you there.